Commissioner. You sent for me. Your plane leaves for South America in one hour, Steve. South America? Kind of hot down there right now, isn't it? Not as hot as it will be after you get down there. <laughs> Send me off to get shot at on the note of gaiety, I always say. All right, what's the deal? There's a deal. A certain little country right there. Uh-oh, I might have known. Hmm? I read the newspapers too, you know. Well, then you know the background. Well, pretty much. That particular country is on the fence politically with an election coming up in three days. The party in power is friendly to us, and the other party is not friendly to us. Right. And last night, Verrego, the head of the unfriendly party, was murdered. Oh, another dictator bit the dust, huh? The man they suspect of murdering Verrego is an American named Hartley. What? Has he been arrested? No, he's in hiding somewhere down in that country. Steve, it's a mess. If Hartley did kill Borrego, the resulting tension and anti-U.S. feeling will be enough to switch the election to the unfriendly party. You say, if Hartley killed Borrego, you think it might be a frame? I'm sending you down there to do my thinking for me. Just one thing. Hmm? Suppose it isn't a frame. Suppose Hartley really did kill Borrego. In that case, we're licked. We haven't got a leg to stand on. Get down there, Steve, and then do anything that's necessary to get to the bottom of this whole rotten mess. Well, that's it. You've got your assignment. Good luck. Sure, I've got my assignment. Fly down to a Latin American country and find a murder suspect named Hartley, then try to prove, if true, that the charge against him is just a frame to fix an election. Of course, the police down there are probably turning the country upside down for him, but I'm supposed to waltz in and spot him hiding behind the nearest oleander tree. A real cinch. It's Friday when the plane lands in the capital city. I always figure if you don't know where else to start, start at the top. So I head for the office of the top man, in this case, a gentleman named Valdez. It is a bad situation, Senor Mitchell. Years of solidarity between our two governments. All this can go down the drain two days from now if our side should lose the election. This uh, dead man, Borrego, Senor Valdez, no thank you. Suppose you tell me a little bit about him. It is my own belief that he had outlived his usefulness to his party. His reputation had become so bad. Now, of course, it is a different matter. Sure. Now he's a big fat martyr. They'll play that up to get more votes. Precisely. And they have the facilities to achieve their goal. One of the newspapers is in the control of the Borrego party. I bet they're busy convincing everybody that he was the greatest man that ever lived. Now, this murder suspect, Hartley, how does he fit into the picture? Well, not very much is known about him, except that he has lived here for several years. The fact that he is in hiding looks very bad. Well, maybe he figured that if he did stay in hiding, he'd have a better break in proving his innocence. That's what I'm down here to find out. Senor Mitchell, there are certain problems involved with your presence here. Serious problems. For instance? The head of our police, a man by the name of Goya. On the other team? Oh, that is something only Goya can answer. He claims that politics are not his business. Perhaps he is speaking the truth. But if the minority party did have a hand in killing Borrego, they will violently resent your presence here and if only for reasons of professional jealousy, so will Goya. Well, I'm glad I've got one friend in this deal. Oh, no, Senor Mitchell. You will be completely on your own in your search for Hartley. Now, you must understand that as head of our government, I can in no way aid you. Well, you state your position very clearly, Senor Valdez. And you're not making my job sound much easier, believe me. You intend to remain here, then, in spite of what I have told you? I was sent down here to do a job. I haven't got much choice, have I? Well, the best of luck, Tim. Looks like I'll need it. Thank you. Ah, the great man himself, working tirelessly in his spacious office, leading our country into slavery. Good afternoon, Senor Artigue. This is Mr. Steve Mitchell. Oh, I see our powerful and unscrupulous neighbors haven't wasted much time sending their agent here. Senor Ortiz is the editor of one of our newspapers. <laughs> Three guesses, which one? <laughs> I'm sure you're talking about my paper. You are quite correct. In fact, that's why I'm here. I want to interview the great Mr. Mitchell. 
Look, you and your paper can... I write an inspired editorial about how Mr. Mitchell and his countrymen not only murder our great political emancipators, but ignore the free press as well. Right, uh, Mr. Uh, Secretary? You had better talk to him, Senor Mitchell. Okay, voice of the people. Start talking. You care to share my simple food? What is it? Sunflower seeds. Hmm? Look, aren't you carrying this common man of the clay thing too far? You crack it with your teeth. Hmm. That certainly seems like a lot of nothing. An excellent nerve tonic. I think you could use one. Why? You're an excellent bluffer. Look, I'm down here just to see that Hartley gets a fair shake if I can find him. What kind of a fair shake does a murderer deserve? Murderer? I'm a little bit behind the times. I didn't even know there'd been a trial. If he's not guilty, why is he hiding? That's a good question. Here's another one. What motive would he have to kill Borrego? Your country send this assassin here to kill our leader so we lose the election. You ought to buy my paper and read it. I'll buy it. You read it. Mitchell, wait. I'm not through with you yet. Wait, Mitchell. Mitchell, I said I wasn't through yet. I'm sorry, Ortig. I bounced. All right. I'll give you the whole story about your countryman, Mr. Hartley. Borrego was approached by Hartley with a proposal to sell out our country to American interest. Borrego refused, so Hartley killed him. Your people are not welcome here anymore. Your story smells pretty near as bad as your threat. I'm staying. The press should recognize such persistence. I shall give your visit and its purpose great publicity. Well, uh... Oh, you don't like publicity. It will give me great pleasure to give it to you. Manuel. I want you to take care of him. No, no, no. Not for the present. For now, you're a reporter. I want banner headlines, the next edition. American visitor arrives to whitewash the crime of his fellow countrymen. Huh? We'll give him every consideration until he meets Hartley. And then... Ortega snapped the bait all right and done just what I wanted him to do, given me a lot of publicity, which I hoped would bring Hartley or one of his friends to me. But so far, the gag hasn't paid off. Hello. Hi. Senor, I have been talking to myself. Oh? See, si. I say to myself, there he is drinking alone, and here I am drinking alone. For why we don't drink together. Indeed, for why we don't, bartender. And now I ask myself questions. Say, you've got something going on all the time, haven't you? I say to myself, Dolores. That is Steve Mitchell. I recognize him by the paper. Oh, and what does Dolores say? Oh, senor, you don't get it. I am Dolores. Oh? I want to talk to you about Jack Hartley. I am his girl. You know where he is? I will telephone and see if it is all right that I bring you to see him. De nada, de nada. I insist I will dry you with my handkerchief. It is not necessary. I'm in a hurry. You have insulted my cousin. Stabbed to death. I saw the whole thing. I was just coming in the door, most unfortunate. Manuel was trying to defend this poor little man against the other two. It was no use. This is Manuel, I take it? Uh, yes. Questioning is not necessary. I watch for him. I gather he works for you. As a matter of fact, he does. Hmm. You know, it may be a coincidence, but I've got a hunch that that little guy was looking for me. Indeed? Yeah, you know him? Of course not. Uh-huh. Of course not. Why should he be looking for you? Might have had some information that had helped me crack this deal wide open. Unfortunately, you will never know now. Don't you bet on that, Ortig. Senor Mitchell. 
The police have arrested Jack. Exactly. That's why I came here to tell you. I wanted you to be the first to know. I didn't know vultures wore straw hats. It is terrible. What will happen to him? You stay here and I'll check with you later, Dolores. I'm going to see what I can find out. I'm going to try and see Hartley. They may not let me. Why not? Because some people are afraid of the truth. Please, Mr. Mitchell, we are just as anxious to know the truth as you are. I wonder. Hello? Hartley? How are you? Steve Mitchell. Government agent from the States. What do you want? Look, the setup here is obvious. The minority party wants to win that election tomorrow. They also want to discredit the United States. So they take you, a U.S. citizen, and rig a frame on you. Frame? Sure. They accuse you of the murder of Borrego, their leader. Now, if you can give me any kind of a lead Mitchell, on... Mitchell, you're wasting your time. Huh? It's no frame, they're right. I did kill Borrego. You mean that story that Ortig ran in his lousy paper was true? I still don't get it. Hey, wait a minute. Don't worry, I haven't been drugged. Are you sure? Look, I ought to know. But do you realize what this killing could mean? A possible split between this country and ours. Brother, if you were trying to sell us down the river, you couldn't have done a better job if you'd tried. Lay off this sermon. I got trouble enough. Yeah. Well, I'll be seeing you, Hartley. Why? There you got me. Guard? I'll just be a second, guard. Pardon me, senor. Pero cuando your feet I cannot sweep. Do you work here, uh, Benito, senor? And it is most polite of you to put it the way you do. I work here, see, si, for a six-month sentence. Oh, you're a trustee, huh? Uh-huh. They trust me with the broom. <laughs> what they put you in here for, Benito? For making flowery speeches. Flowery? Oh, you mean uh, political? No, oh, romantical. Rom Mira, I say, ah, senorita. You are the most beautiful, the most wonderful one of all. Will you marry with me? I didn't know you cared. Did he say? <laughs> you mean they put you in jail for that? Well, maybe they, they should. But what's illegal about it? I make the same speech six times. Each time I get the same answer. See? What's wrong? Each time is with a different senorita. <laughs> Glutton for punishment, huh? Uh, look, Bluebeard. I'd like a little information. Sure, senor. The prisoner in that cell. El senor Hartley? Yeah. Have you seen anyone use any rough stuff on him? You mean, uh, pushing him back and forth? No. Uh -huh. Have you seen anyone go in there with a hypodermic needle? No. Now look, Benito, this is rather important. I hope you're sure. But I am sure, senor. I've been working right around the same passageway ever since they bring El senor Hartley in. Thanks, Benito. Senor Mitchell. The uh, jailer said you wanted to see me. I'm Alfredo Goya, chief of police. Oh, I'm glad to meet you. I trust your talk with Senor Hartley was satisfactory. Mm, yeah. He admitted his guilt to you? Well, he... Uh... Yes or no, Senor Mitchell? Well, yes. Mm. Now, of course, you will be going home. If I can help you in any way... Why the fast rush, Senor Goya? Because there's no more you can do here. Yeah? Well, I think I'll stick around a couple of days. Mitchell, you force me to speak plainly. I have the best police force in South America. We found Senor Hartley without your help. We will see that he gets a fair trial. Will you? I have one interest, Mitchell. Justice. This we can obtain without your interference. Well, if I do stick around and happen to get in your way, what happens? 
The penalty for obstructing justice is quite severe. Need I say more? I think I get the picture. Hartley admits guilt to American agents. I talked to Hartley five minutes ago, and you've already got it in print. Aren't you rushing things? We are copying it from your American radio and television. You know, tomorrow headlines tonight. Manuel, it's time to write another story about Mr. Mitchell. The men are ready. Mm -hmm. I want to read it tomorrow morning in the obituary column. Made a mistake, Senor Mitchell. Go oh, ahead. Yeah. I warn you, Senor. <laughs> Pretty neat. You warn a guy and then you work overtime carrying it out. If I had shot at you, Senor Mitchell, I would not have missed. Yeah. Okay, so it was one of your men, huh? My gun, please. I told you it was not safe for you. Yeah, I guess not. Is that one of your boys? No. Hmm. As I told you before, my only interest is in seeing the justice is done. But after what has happened here tonight, you must realize that you are no longer welcome here. If you wish to stay alive, I suggest that you return home. Wait a minute. Dolores, that little guy that was stabbed here tonight, did you know him? But of course. His name was Ricardo Montes. Was there any connection that you can think of between him and Hartley? Where the murder of Borrego was concerned, no. Where anything was concerned? Well, they were business associates. They roomed together. What? Come on, let's get over to their room, see if we can find anything. But Steve, the police have already searched the room right after the murder. Dolores, when you've only got one lead left, you hang on to it. Come on. I have a key. It's unlocked. Somebody left the lights on. I did. Good evening, senor. Senorita, a little surprised to see you here. Oh? I thought you said you had all the case you needed against Hartley. Couldn't be that you think this thing could still be a frame. I told you before, I'm interested only in seeing justice done. So am I, Goya. That's why I'm here. Thought I might turn up something that might be a lead. But if you've been all over the place... I arrived only a moment before you, senor Mitchell. Perhaps I can help if you will tell me what you are looking for. That's just it. I don't know. Lieutenant Goya, when you came here just now, were you alone? Yes. When Hartley was arrested, who was here? Two of my men. Nobody what? else? No. <laughs> Senor Goya, how do they execute people in your country? By firing squad. Thanks. Uh, Senor Mitchell. I'll check with you later. How should I know why Ricardo was stabbed? Maybe somebody didn't like him. Could be he was a patriotic little guy. Oh, well, I, I can hardly wait to hear. Okay, add it up this way. Borrego was leader of the minority party, but he'd outlived his usefulness. So why not get rid of him in such a way as to further the cause of the party? Kill two birds with one stone. Look, I don't get what this is all about, you know. No. You kill Borrego, and you're the fall guy. Me? Yeah. Look, get out of here, Mitchell. You're not making sense. No. This will make sense. What is it? Something I found in your room. A sunflower seed. So what? You know who's always stuffing these in his big fat face? Ortig, the editor of the minority paper. You know what that adds up to me? 
Ortig was in your room cooking up the whole lousy deal with you. Ricardo was about to tell me all about it. That's a lie. You take the rap for Ortig's outfit, and then they get you off the hook. Was that it? Get out of here. Sure, sure. First, let me leave you with this cheerful thought. You think you've been pretty smart in this deal. You've really been the world's prize sucker. All right. Now, you've had your say. Now, get out. Execution is by firing squad in this country, isn't it? What did Ortig tell you? He had connections that had put blank cartridges in all the guns? Shut up and get out of here. You didn't think your party boys were going to let you live knowing as much as you do about the deal, did you? You through now? Sure. Do you really think they were going to be blank cartridges? <laughs> Why don't you beat it? Blank cartridges. So long, Hartley. Guard. of the deal I've got figured out right, but from Hartley's reaction, I've hit the main points on the nose. I'm not sure how big a dent I've made in him, but I am sure that this is my only chance. When I get back to Hartley's room, Dolores is alone. I innocently suggest that she pay him a visit to cheer him up. Then I wait for her near the jail. Oh, Senor Mitchell. Okay, Dolores, hand it over. Look, you can trust me. What are you talking about? Look, didn't Hartley give it to you? Give what? Look, Hartley knows now that the boys are going to sell him out. What's the logical thing for him to do? Write a confession and smuggle it out of jail. It's his only insurance. What confession? He gave me no confession, nothing. You want to help him, don't you? You know I do. Well, then hand it over. I am telling you the truth. He gave me no document, nothing. Oh, don't tell me I've guessed wrong in this deal again. Uh, I guess maybe I have. All right, Skip, if you run along, I'll check with you later. What's up, Benito? For you. Senor Hartley asked me to deliver this. I must get back before they miss me. Too bad you had to read that scene. It will cost you your life. I will take it now. Sure, you killed Borrego. You sugared Hartley into taking the rap, telling him he'd be taken care of. And he would have been, too. Yeah, by a firing squad with real bullets. That would shut his mouth. And with Borrego out of the way, your party would ride into power on a wave of anti-U.S. feeling. You analyze our plan very well. And I must thank you for mentioning the possibility of Hartley writing this. Otherwise, I might not have known about it. Yeah, you can't check that bloomer up to me, I guess. I thought when I sent you in to see Hartley that he'd give you the document. Now that I've read it, I can see why he couldn't. And now... Mitchell! I take that confession. I don't think so. What is this, a Yankee trick? No, a South American trick. A little guy called Benito. He's right behind you. He left. That's where you're wrong. He's a special police, one of Goya's men. That's the oldest bluff in the world. It won't work. There's no bluff. Oh. Thanks, Benito. Hope you didn't mind my calling you a policeman. I was only joking. It's no joke. I am. Huh? Goya, like yourself, suspected a frame. And you were a... Oh, now I've seen everything. <laughs> and that's about it, Commissioner. Dolores and Ortiz are up for murder with Hartley as accessory. And their little gag fell flat on its kisser. Good work, Steve. And Senor Valdez tells me that the uh, early returns on the election indicate that the minority is still the minority. Good. And the thing that ruined their whole plan was something he ate? Yeah. What was it? Sunflower seed. A sunflower seed. So long, Commissioner. Still nothing.